Well, welcome everyone. My name is Matt Schreck. I am the simulation product specialist here at CATI who kind of covers Colorado and a little bit of the West. And uh, Today we're gonna talk to you about Simulia for SolidWorks. Uh, you might've also heard the name Simulia Works. Um, you know, there's a few different sort of monikers, if you will, um, but we'll call it Simulia for SolidWorks um, now and, and moving forward. So, all it is really in all these different monikers, they just mean that we're looking at the 3D experience structural analysis tools. Um, so the 3D experience platform is a vast array of different programs, and we're just looking at sort of the simulation subset of those. Uh, and the benefits of these are that they, they leverage the Abacus technology. So Abacus comes from a Dassault brand called Simulia, um, who also handle like Tosca and Eyesight and a bunch of others. But the general benefits of Abacus is that we can use advanced mesh types. So we're no longer constrained to tetrahedra. Uh, we get the benefits of the Simulia Abacus general contact, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. And also just the, the excellent Abacus solvers, including the explicit dynamic solvers, which we'll look at today. The benefit of having all of this on the platform is that it is now connected in a more seamless way to SOLIDWORKS. And we'll take a look at how that works here in just a second. So there's a few different levels of the Simulia for SOLIDWORKS uh, products. Uh, they come in sort of the, the three tiered system, very similarly to how SOLIDWORKS simulation handles theirs. Um, each tier kind of building on the last, um, but they all leverage the same background technology. That is the advanced materials and solvers that Abacus offers, as well as the different mesh types and the general contact as well. And because it's on the 3D experience platform, we can also leverage cloud computing um, when analyzing large simulations. So the structural simulation designer is sort of the entry level um, product here, and it's more or less akin to maybe what simulation professional can do. Um, in the SOLIDWORKS suite. We have some linear statics, some frequency analysis, including buckling, and some uh, thermal FEA capabilities. Building on top of that, we have the structural performance engineer role. Um, this adds, it's more or less akin to SOLIDWORKS simulation premium with a little bit of extras, right? We have those uh, great general contact algorithms, the advanced meshing, but essentially we can do nonlinear static and nonlinear dynamic um, implicit analysis. And then the structural mechanics engineer is sort of the, the top rung, if you will. And this is where we get into the, the nonlinear dynamic explicit type solvers um, and all around just a lot of things that SOLIDWORKS simulation just isn't really built to handle. Um, we can uh, do these types of problems on the 3D experience platform. So we offer a number of different simulation products now at CATI, so we like to sort of break them down by end user role. So at more or less the designer level, we usually target that sort of job role or workflow with uh, SOLIDWORKS Premium and Simulation Standard. This is really great for quick no or go, no go type analyses, uh, just saying, hey, is this gonna break? No, okay, moving on with my designs. The next rung up is sort of our engineer's role. This is where uh, users will start asking some harder questions like, trying to get more design insight with a topology optimization, or maybe they're concerned about natural frequency and need to do some frequency analysis, or maybe even some light nonlinear dynamic work with a uh, SOLIDWORKS simulation premium. Okay. And then finally, sort of at the top of the rung, which is relatively new to us here um, because of the platform is the analyst level of structural products, right? This is all coming from the Dassault system Simulia brand uh, where they can do the Abacus and PowerFlow and XFlow and all of those great, you know, very, very high-end solvers. And we can leverage the 3D experience platform in the form of structural mechanics engineer and structural professional engineer to more or less borrow that technology and, and have it in a more user-friendly uh, environment. So uh, this is our roadmap for the day. We're gonna first look at this Parrot drone that you can see on the bottom of my screen here in SOLIDWORKS simulation. Uh, then we're gonna use the SOLIDWORKS 3D experience connector to take the model up to the cloud, take our existing simulation studies up to the cloud, 
And then finally, we'll take a look at some of the added benefits of the structural mechanics engineer role, which is the top level role we were looking at a few moments ago. So starting off in SOLIDWORKS simulation, uh, here is our Parrot drone. Uh, we'll just kind of go briefly through the setup and everything. It's a relatively simple assembly. It's just the chassis of the model here. So only three or four parts, including the base. So in order to do something like this in SOLIDWORKS, we first turn on our SOLIDWORKS simulation add-in and begin a drop test study. So in this analysis, we have the base plate modeled as a metal, and then there's an ABS material applied to the rest of the components with a nonlinear material model associated with it. So we can look at post-strain behaviors. There are a lot of contacts that were, had to be set up more or less manually right, uh, between interfacing faces, places that we need to have uh, a sliding contact between components. Uh, so this is not solved as all bonded. Right? So you can see there's a number of those. Next, for a drop test study, you have to set up uh, how you're dropping it. Right? And this is pretty simple, just how fast you're dropping it, where the ground is, and which way gravity goes. Right? So you can see we're dropping it at five meters per second. There's gravity in inches. Uh, if we're dropping it on something soft, we could do some contact damping. And then finally, we just have to tell it how long after impact we're simulating through here. All right. So that's the basic setup in SOLIDWORKS. Um, you know, a lot of you probably have a lot of experience doing FEA in SOLIDWORKS, so none of that is probably very new to you. But now we can go ahead and leverage the SOLIDWORKS 3D Experience connector to uh, make this a little bit more intelligent. So we can take our model as well as our simulation up to the cloud. Let's take a peek at how that looks. So again, we have our drop test study. Um, the 3D Experience Connector is just another add-in. So it exists, you know, just a few under SOLIDWORKS simulation there. And it functions very similarly to how uh, the PDM, you know, quote unquote, Blueberry might work, right? We have all of our parts in the list and we can just click save on there to upload them to our 3D Experience platform. Right, everything's checked as save. The nice thing about this upload process is we can enter revision comments down below. So I wanna tag these for you know, uh, doing some analysis work. And then we can release the reservations so that others will be able to open it after we save it. Right, so from here, we'll click save and you get an upload progress bar here. So this is doing a few different things. Uh, obviously it's uploading our parts to the cloud to be managed by the Anovia backbone of the 3D Experience platform. Um, but it's also converting our SOLIDWORKS geometry in the background to a, uh, a format that's more easily consumed um, by the 3D Experience platform, the, the 3D XML format. And then once that conversion is complete, we'll get a nice little pop-up here saying the geometry is being processed. We're in good shape there, just click okay. And all we have to do now after this, if you notice on the bottom right of my screen, there's a kind of a colored gear icon. This is how we upload the simulation. So clicking that, we can transfer our SOLIDWORKS simulation study to the 3D experience simulation. Then we'll get another nice little bit of feedback here that it's been created and it's ready to use, all right? So that's all there is to the connector. Like I said, it works very closely, very similarly to how PDM might work. Right, except everything is now a, uh, a cloud-based storage. So now that we've uploaded everything, we'll begin to dig into the structural mechanics engineer role and its capabilities and just how it looks and how it feels a little bit. So this is the native apps install of structural mechanics engineer. So usually what I'll do in, we're just kind of walking Robert through this at the moment, um, but I'll just launch any generic app really, just to kind of get things moving, to get the interface away from the DSO systems thing, just clicking okay through this. What I'm looking for is this box right here to search for the product I just uploaded. So we can use all the same familiar search terms you might use like in Google, including the asterisks, things like that. So there is our drone assembly, all right? And then when we click okay on here, it's gonna open that, um, that assembly in a in a new app for us. All right. 
So here we can see that maximize the window there a little bit. This is launched in the structural model creation app. And you can see the app names in the upper left. Right. Um, our whole product structure has been uploaded. You can see the Parrot drone, including its appearances. Um, in study here, you can see that it carried over some of the mesh as well, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, and we can dig as deep through this sort of a product tree as we like. It's very similar to how the feature manager works in SOLIDWORKS. We even carried over our materials. You can see the 1020 and the ABS that we had in SOLIDWORKS as well. Right. But we're in pretty good shape to um, continue with our setup here. In um, 3D experience roles, it's best to mesh first. So the, the process that you might be used to from SOLIDWORKS is flipped on its head a little bit. Obviously, you can do things in more or less whatever order you want, but uh, I find it best for this product to mesh first. So we're going to zoom in a little bit and take a look at the mesh that we have created here. So here's the advanced mesh types. We can do uh, shell meshes with triangles or quads, uh, tetrahedrons as well, first and second order. And then we have the hex mesh and the hex dominant mesh, which will create hexahedral elements as well as wedge elements and those types of things. So I'm going to hide the model here and we'll just show the mesh one by one. So here you can see a hex mesh for the floor base that we're dropping the drone on. Here you can see the tetrahedral meshes for the guards that we've created, right? And those got carried over directly from SOLIDWORKS. And then finally, you can see the tetrahedral mesh for the chassis it carried over directly from SOLIDWORKS as well. So the only thing we really changed is the hex mesh for the base. Obviously, that's something that we're not really able to do in SOLIDWORKS, right? So once now that we've looked at the mesh, let's go ahead and um, launch into another app called Mechanical Scenario Creation. Notice that I have a lot of roles in the list here. And all a role is is a collection of apps. So don't get too confused. But those roles grant us some permutation or combination of all the apps you could see in my list here. Um, most of the time, you know, you don't have to know what each app does or, or anything like that. So, but we know that we need a mechanical scenario here to set up our simulation. So we click that, we'll launch a structural simulation in this case, click OK. And now we can continue to review our um, simulation setup for the drone. All right. So uh, over on the left, you'll see that our feature tree has changed now that we're in the mechanical scenario creation app. I like to use the feature manager and the assistant whenever I'm doing anything on the platform here. The assistant does a great job of walking you step by step through an analysis. You can see that most everything is already checked in this case um, because we, we launched it from the SOLIDWORKS setup. But we have an explicit dynamic step. We could have a few other steps if we needed to. Uh, the steps are all done through the procedures list here. So you could see explicit dynamics and implicit dynamics there at the bottom. So this is more or less akin to choosing your solver or uh, choosing your study type in SOLIDWORKS simulation, right? The explicit dynamic step, you just say, hey, I want it to simulate for this many seconds. And here's my incrementation options. And you're off to the races from there. All right, we've already got one set up. Uh, the parts list. Uh, this is where we apply materials and those types of things to our parts. Connections is how we handle how parts interact with each other, um, at least in terms of like a bonded connection might be a tie connection, right? The terminology is going to be a little bit different, right? But this tie connection here would be how we would bond surfaces together in the model, right? Interactions is where the general contact lives. So we keep talking about the, the powerful general contact. You could see it in my feature manager here. Um, it's also under the interactions list down on sort of our bottom command tab here. Um, we can show disconnected bodies if we want to. The general contact will apply to any surfaces that come into contact throughout the simulation. And it's pretty simple to set up. We just say we're looking for general contact between all surfaces. We can enter friction data and penalty data and all sorts of stuff in there if we need it. Next thing we have to set up is the restraints. Um, again, terminology is a little bit different, but 
the functionality is the same. We have clamps and fixed displacements and symmetry and all the things you might be used to from SOLIDWORKS simulation. Right, you can see some of those in the feature manager there. The loads, again, are pretty self-explanatory. Pressure, force, gravity, translations, those types of things. They exist in the assistant. Assistant out of the way here. Uh, they exist in the assistant and under the loads tab here, you get a few extra options. And we can go through and take a peek at some of those by double click. So this is the fixed displacement. We're just clamping or fixing the bottom of the plate in all six degrees of freedom. So you can see that in this dialog box over here. All right. Uh, we could take a look at gravity again just by double clicking. You can see that gravity is in our negative Z direction, uh, 9.81 meters per second. Good shape there. And for a drop test, you need an, an initial velocity. So again, we got the five meters per second carried over from SOLIDWORKS in here as well. All right, you can see those getting shown as we go into it. They were hidden before. Um, but you can see all the arrows associated with that and we'll hide them again, just so it's not so busy. We already looked at the mesh, so uh, we're in pretty good shape there, but we could reshow those again through the feature manager if we needed to. Right, again, they're all down here on, on our bottom uh, command manager. The thing I like about this is we can go to the mesh part manager and we can choose the size or the order of any of our elements directly from here. So no longer do we have to go and apply mesh controls and remesh the whole body uh, or the whole assembly like we have to do in SOLIDWORKS. We can change each of the individual meshes from that mesh part manager, which is a really neat feature. Right? So we're pretty much uh, done with the setup here. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what it would take to simulate this. So after the setup is complete, we can click simulate, which will launch the mechanical scenario creation app, where we get the simulate tab. Right? And we could run through the model and scenario checks, as well as the simulation checks. These are sort of, um, you know, just a, a way to look over your, your fem rep and your setup to make sure that there's nothing you missed. And then from there, uh, you just have to click simulate. Um, after clicking simulate, you'll be given the option to either use the four cores of embedded compute that comes with the product. So that's four cores on your local machine. Or um, if you've bought credits, you can leverage the cloud computing options as well to just let the cloud solve this for you. Right. Either way, once it's complete, we can take a peek at the results. So the results post-processing is my favorite part about this product because it's a lot um, more intuitive, at least to me, in term uh, than SOLIDWORKS is. So this is just a pure deformation plot. We can click each individual time step to see what it looks like at each of those places. This is pure deformation, so no color plots associated with it. But we could switch to displacement and view it as a displacement as well. You can animate with the play button on the compass, which is kind of neat. And you can see how the drop test proceeds uh, throughout the course of our animation here. So. You can see that that general contact allows these bodies to come apart from each other and slide on magnitudes that we would never be able to accomplish with SOLIDWORKS simulation, at least not without a lot of um, massaging. We can view von Mises stress just through another simple drop down. And here, as you would expect, you can see the stress. Let me move the legend over so we can actually see those values. Dock that over here. Right, so you could see the stress as it propagates through maybe this uh, connecting area right here. One of the really nice things about the platform is that your mouse is a constant probe tool. So I can run the mouse along any of the exterior faces of this, and I can be given real feedback on whatever stress, displacement, uh, whatever have you is on those surfaces. Right, and so you don't have to right click the plot and activate the probe tool and select faces. It's just a live feedback system there, which is really cool. We could also plot plastic strain directly, select plastic strain from here. Um, so this will only show us uh, strain above the yield limit, right? Zero being yield point. So anything that shows up in here will be um, plastic strain, right? So we can step through the time steps here and see what our permanent plastic deformation may be. 
We can also plot factor of safety directly. I like the way they handle factor of safety plots in that it, just up to the end here, it only shows you in colors what is above a factor of safety of a specific value. In this case, it's set to two. So we're only seeing in color what is, or excuse me, below a factor of safety of two, which is really neat. Right. So there's all sorts of other types of post-processing we can do. So for example, let me switch to this one here. Um, we can section view just like we would in SOLIDWORKS, right? We're given a little triad here that we can move around and translate and rotate. Uh, we can switch directions um, just through this in context toolbar up here. Again, just grabbing things with the triad. And again, if we were to activate that or deactivate it, we can probe along any of those areas, show minimum and maximum value uh, via this button right here, right? Or maximum displacements at sort of the tip of the drone that off from there. Uh, we can also get hard data out of this, like uh, you know XY plots. So let's say I want to plot reaction force. Let's use uh, node sets and then use our fixed displacement, which is just our fixture on the bottom as our nodes. And then I want to plot uh, reaction force. Right? And clicking apply, this will give me a live plot of our reaction force on that bottom plate. So you can see we have kind of a bouncing behavior going on here. The drone impacts and then there's not there's no reaction and then it impacts a couple more times as it comes back down and goes to rest okay. so robert's done a great job of um, running the simulation and setting everything up and letting me talk through it here uh, all he has to do to upload this to the cloud now is click that little arrow um, the the right facing arrow in the upper right here and that will save our simulation file and all the geometry and everything to our cloud so that it exists on the platform safely and securely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log in and check his work. Even though he's my boss, I still wanna make sure that he's doing this correctly. So um, I just log into my cloud tenant here with my credentials and I can go and um, into just a blank dashboard. And this is how I like to start when there's a new project. I just have a blank tab in my dashboard here and we're gonna build it up from scratch and review some of Robert's work. So I'm just gonna search for, um, for the drop test that Robert just did. And there's a bunch of filters that I can use on the right uh, if I need to. So I could filter by you know, work Robert's done, by collaborative space, whatever I need to. Um, but it'll, it'll, this will return anything with the words drop test in it. So I'm looking for the simulation right here. And what I like to do is launch relations app here. So that'll tell me every file in the Anovia backbone of the platform that's related to my simulation. Right? So I'm opening the simulation here. You can see it exists and there's it references two separate objects. One is a representation and one is a physical object. So I can click the plus there and load those up and see what those look like. Right? This also is, is referenced by other objects. So just clicking these pluses allows me to really explore the entire product um, geometry here you know we we're looking at a simulation and then an assembly and then each individual body um, and so on and so forth i'm going to pin this to our dashboard All right so that means every time we go to our new tab in our dashboard here i'm going to be given this product structure All right um, and it's all in this live you know interface that exists just in a in a web browser i'm just in chrome here let me go ahead and rename this to something I'll remember later. So we can just call this drone drop test, something like that. Click OK. And then from here, I want to fill up some of this blank space. So we'll go back into the compass. I'm looking for widgets. So there's apps and there's widgets, but essentially I'm just looking for apps that have this little arrow up in the upper right. That means that you can drag those onto a blank dashboard and use them through the web interface here. So I'm gonna take 3D Play and I'm gonna drag it over. 3D Play allows me to have, um, essentially view 3D geometry in this sort of lightweight web application. So I'm gonna drag, let me make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. I'm gonna drag my assembly over into 3D Play. And this will load up my assembly geometry as well as any representations. So as you'll see, I'll have my finite element representation and my geometry all displayed simultaneously. I can filter one or the other off if I want to more closely inspect the geometry or the, the mesh. I can do that directly from here, but we'll leave this as is. What I'm really concerned about is taking a look at my simulation results. 
right? So that's just done through another widget. So I can scroll down in my list here and I'll look for, uh, I think it's physics simulation review widget or something like that. Yep, there it is. Again, widget with the arrow in the upper right. We could drag that onto our empty space over here. The nice thing about this particular widget is that I can view simulations through a web browser, which is really incredible. This is a drop test. Um, they're pretty notorious for having massive uh, solution files. So the, ability, the fact that I'm able to look at this through the web is pretty awesome. So let me give this a little bit more real estate. Again, you can just drag and drop and resize stuff at to your heart's content. Make this a little bit bigger. I have different you know, view orientations that I can put here. Again, I can animate directly from this. I think we're looking at displacement in this case, but we can switch that up here in a second. And this is live, right? I can rotate it and turn it and, and do whatever I need to, to at least do some light post-processing here. I can view stress results. So this is plotting stress instead of displacement now. So we can animate stress instead. It's just a basic von Mises stress plot. I can step by step through the uh, simulation with this little drag bar right here. So this is just all the individual simulation steps. And I look in here and uh, Robert's a little bit more experienced than me maybe. So maybe I have some questions so I can use the annotations directly in this app and maybe circle this area. It looks a little concerning to me the way that that has happened. And I can leave a little note annotation here. You know, Maybe ask Robert if there's some buckling or anything like that going on. Um, hopefully I can spell better. There we go. Right. And when I click validate, that annotation will be on this widget here um, for anyone who I share it with to see. So all I have to do to share this dashboard that I've created, this nice visual review of our simulation, is hit the drop down and click share. So I can take this and um, send it to Robert. So I just search him from our user list here. Right. Looks like I need to add the last name in. Select Robert from the list, type him a little note. Um, so once I share this, he'll be notified on his 3D Experience platform that somebody has shared a dashboard with him. And then he can log in, view my annotations here, and view this dashboard that I've created um, with the product structure and all the different visualization tools. Right. So let's say I leave for the day and I'm at home and I want to show off the cool a drone simulation that I did to my wife or something. This is one of my favorite things about the platform is that since it's all through web browser, I can view this on my phone. So I'm just going to log into the same tenant that I usually do just through my Chrome browser on my cell phone. Wait for it to log in here. And I'll be greeted with whatever dashboard I was looking at last. Right. So the drone drop test will be the one that comes up. Uh, it's going to load some of that data in there. but Really, I just want to show off the, uh, the simulation review app. So we'll just scroll down and maximize that window. And just like that, we can view this drop test simulation, which, as I've said, are, can be pretty cumbersome as far as results processing goes. Um, I can view this directly from my cell phone. Looking at maximum and minimums here for a displacement plot. I can rotate things around. It's a little weird with, thing, with using your fingers to rotate models like that. Um, maybe on the younger side, but I'm still getting used to that. I can view all the different elemental stuff that may be going in here. Um, I can again animate this if I want to, right? Show it off to to whomever. So it's pretty incredible. You can view this stuff directly from a, a phone browser. Uh, it comes with a, a set of standard views. Obviously, I could do annotations through here, which might actually be easier um, now that I think about it, using your fingers to draw circles and arrows and things like that. But just really neat functionality. Because everything is on the cloud, that means we can use anything that can access the cloud to view it. So you can use your cell phone, you can use your tablet. Um, obviously, we, we ran this on, my, on a local computer. Um, for its processing power and things like that. But in order to adopt you know, the, this, this product, um, we have to design products better while designing better products, right? Or the other way around. 
So ultimately, by leveraging simulation, you're going to be reducing uh, need for physical prototyping. You're going to find and correct mistakes a lot faster. Uh, it allows you to solve problems like mass to weight ratio um, and things like things like that. You know, all the same stuff that we've been using SolidWorks simulation for for many many years. This just takes that to the next level. So with that, I'll go ahead and um, kind of turn it back over to Robert. Did we have any questions come in or anything I can answer? Yeah, great, great job, Matt. So uh, we do have a couple questions that came in. And the first one is, does this do surface body uh, uh, meshing, uh, essentially, to cut down on the sim time? Yeah, so uh, we can do shell meshes. I believe that might be what you're getting at. But where you have a, where you bring in a surface body and you give it a virtual thickness, um, yeah, it, it supports shell and beam meshes as well. So one dimensional. Good question. Yep. Uh, we have another question here. Can dashboards you've created be shared privately with people who aren't in your company and don't have their own 3DX accounts? Uh, I'm not sure about dashboards. There is a way that you can give um, external people access to collaborative spaces to review. Um, I might have to get back to you on that, but there is some at least limited functionality to do what you're looking to do there. Great question. And then are geometry updates in SOLIDWORKS linked directly to structural mechanics uh, model? I.e. if you made an update, will the simulation update automatically? Great question. And that's the benefit of using the SOLIDWORKS connector that we covered at the beginning, because that's essentially using the 3D Experience platform as a data management tool. So any changes that you make in SOLIDWORKS after you've saved them back to the platform will then be consumable uh, by the platform. Now, it's not going to live update your simulation results. You'll still have to rerun the simulation with the updated geometry. But yeah, it works just like SOLIDWORKS might. Good question. Uh, we have another question. Will this do wave um, waveform after impact? I notice it was all positive. Wave so, after impact. I guess I'd yeah, a clarification I there. Yeah, I believe the, the question is looking at, you know, will we see the, the shock through the device or through the component and then have it come back, basically the rebound uh, as well. And I think what happened was, you know, this was only solved through a certain amount of time. If you solve this simulation longer, you'll actually see that parrot grow and you'll see the wave go through it, the shock wave go through it, come back, and eventually it will come to rest on that on that surface. Uh, it's uh, dependent on how long you solve that that simulation for. Is this in reference to the elastic wave propagation? Yes, that? I believe okay. so. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think this only solved for. 0 0.05 seconds. So I believe you'd probably see that more pronounced if we solved it for a little bit longer and maybe scaled the, the stress plots a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So we have another question. Can you set up simulation templates, i.e. a standard simulation that you can just plug new geometry into? Ability for custom UI corresponding to a particular simulation template to simplify the inputs for the user so they don't have to set up mesh, materials, loads, et cetera, every time. Yeah, so that's one of the benefits of the Abacus technology um, is that they have what's called rules editing. So you can have meshing rules and simulation rules that are essentially exactly what you're getting at, that they're templates, um, that if you do the same type of analysis a lot, they reduce that initial impact input, I should say. Um, so yeah, there's there's meshing rules editors and simulation rules editors that, that should do uh, exactly that. I want to thank everyone for um, participating in this webinar. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to Matt or I. And also, you know, if you want to see the product in in depth uh, or further, uh, please write, reach out to your uh, sales account manager as well. They'll be able to put you in contact with us. And we'd be happy to show you the, the software or any aspect of it that you are still curious about. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for your attention and your great questions. And looking forward to showing more of this in the future.